Hey everybody, welcome back to Viper Magic's channel. I'm not Jim Afanis, I am Brent Casina. We are here in my man cave on my temporary gaming couch. I have a new one coming soon. And we're gonna talk about the Xbox presentation today and why it doesn't seem like they can get their heads together and be like Sony. Now, you may have heard before, I'm mostly an Xbox gamer. I think simply because that was the only console I had for many, many years. I only got a PS4 Pro when it came out, I think, and that was because of, so maybe it was a year after that, but it was mainly because of Spider-Man. So I played a bunch of PlayStation uh, 3 and 4 exclusives on that. Um, played the God of War trilogy, played the new God of War, and um, been, you know, on that ever since, kind of like at my exclusives machine. Because I've been playing 360 and the Xbox One and all my games are there now you know not just because i purchased them but games with gold and microsoft has that backwards compatibility thing down pat but you know they had their conference today and we all we all by we all i mean like the gaming press xbox fanboys moderate xbox fans like myself even though jim would probably call me a a real xbox fanboy because it seems to be like i'd always get offended at stupid things sony would do because I, I like Xbox and I have, you know, been happy to buy most of my games there. Um, really, the only things I've bought from my PlayStation are uh, the exclusives, you know. I bought uh, Last of Us Part II uh, and played it on, on release because this was the big game of the, the generation. And it was a great game. I really enjoyed playing it. And I was, like, going to get rid of my PS4 until I was like, well, do I want to play Ghost of Tsushima? Obviously, I am still have my PS4. I'm playing Ghost of Tsushima, and I'm loving it. And, um, you know, I'm interested to see what PlayStation has. And they had a great showing. That, but PlayStation also had a very different kind of showing. You know, um, what was that, two months ago, last month? I think it was last month. They showed off the box for the first time, which is enormous and to me, it, its design is pretty, but if that thing is enormous, if it's taller than my speakers, then we're gonna have a problem because it's not gonna fit in my entertainment center. And I think a lot of people are gonna be pissed when it turns out it doesn't fit in their entertainment centers. I have an IKEA center, and it slots, you know, it fits the PS, PS4 Pro, but I don't know, man. It's the same thing with the Series X. I don't know if it's gonna fit in there. It looks pretty wide if I wanna turn it on its side. So, Xbox has been taking a different thing, a different approach with their stuff. They showed us the box in December at the Game Awards 2019. So we've known what it was called and what it looks like for six months now. Uh, the only thing we haven't seen is any like real next-gen games, next-gen gameplay. And did we get that this show? No. Um... PS5 didn't show us anything until the show last month. They didn't know, show us the box. We only knew the name. Uh, and they showed us next-gen gameplay. And the big wow, I think, from that was the Spider-Man Miles Morales announcement. Even though, it, I mean, it is a launch title. It's more akin to Uncharted Lost Legacy than it is to, like, a full launch, you know, Halo 5 uh, sort of thing. So... You know, is it a full price game? Are they going to charge you $6 for it? Who knows? You know, I think it took me, I think the Spider-Man story was like 40 hours and I did, spent a lot of time in that game. I cleared everything. I loved it. Is it do I think it's going to take that same amount of time for Miles Morales? Probably not. I think it's it's a good hope for, you know, I hope that game is as big as Spider-Man, the uh, original game, but they've already come out and said that it's more akin to um, Uncharted The Lost Legacy here. Which was a fine, you know, addition to itself, but, you know, the premier launch title, and they might be missing the boat. But I think because it's Spider-Man, and it's coming on the heels of that other game, uh, I think they're going to have a huge hit on their hands. And and they deserve, deserve it, because it's a great game, it's a great base to build off of. Microsoft, meanwhile, I was talking to Jim after the conference today, uh, I don't know what they've been doing. It seemed like Phil Spencer was the guy for the last, you know, five years since he took over. Don Matrick left, we abandoned the TV, 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 we abandoned the Kinect, and we were buying, stu we as, you know, Xbox, the community, the company, whatever, Microsoft was buying studios to, uh, you know, plus up their portfolio. Sony seems to have an endless number of 
uh, exclusive studios that make exclusive games for them. Games like Uncharted, games like God of War. Uh, this is the remaster. I, I think I borrowed the new one from Jim, but this is God of War 3 remastered. Games like Horizon Zero Dawn, which had a sequel announced, which is probably coming out next year with um, Forbidden West, right? This is what that one is called. So these are all third-person action games, and this is basically my thesis for this little thing. Third-person action game, God of War. This is the original series, right? But the new one, basically third-person action game, little bit open-worldy. Uncharted. Third person action game. Linear in this in the original ones, and it's open world-ish on this one. Right? And then you have open world third person action game Horizon Zero Dawn. You know, uh Last of Us Part 2, third person action game. Linear, but you know, it's there. Ghost of Tsushima. I don't think we knew it was gonna be an open world game, but it's a third person action open world game. Now you may say, you know, um, Xbox trying to do other things because they ha have a focus on racing. They've been putting out the Forza series year after year after year. Meanwhile, I don't think PlayStation put out a um, Gran Turismo uh, game on the PS4 era of the consoles. They It's coming for PS5, but they didn't put out, you know, I think they put out like six Forza games, I think, on this thing. We started with Forza 5, 6, and 7, and we had Horizon two and three and four i have no idea it's a lot it's a lot of racing games on xbox um so they they're pouring and that's two different studios that do those racing games you know one does the horizon one does the main forza and it seems like uh turn turn 10 or playground games is now doing fable which we saw at the end of the conference but um are they still going to do another horizon game who knows i think it was a second team they had said before that was working on something else um so that that's kind of expanding but there's a focus on other types of games at Microsoft, which may help them, you know, puff their chests up and say, we have a um, big portfolio and, um, you know, a diverse type of games for all types of players. And I think that is a cool thing to put on your little merit badge sash for your video game company. However, in the minds of gamers, I don't think that really sells that you're the premier place to play. Now they're going into other things with xCloud, which is really a great idea. Have we seen it implemented yet? No. Um, I have an iPhone, so I have the beta flight thing. Unfortunately, for some weird th reason with Apple, they only are able to put one game on there. Meanwhile, if you get into the uh, Android beta for the xCloud, you have I don't know, 15 games to try out and stream from their servers. So do it, does it leave me with any hope that when it launches, it's going to launch on Apple right away? No. Does it leave me with any hope that it's going to have uh, a bunch of games on there? No. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's an Android-only thing for a little while, and that's a bummer. Thanks a lot, Apple. As much as I love their products, sometimes they suck. Um, you know, they have Xbox Game Pass, which is a great service that I don't use, because I have a lot of games that already that I haven't played and that I want to play. So I don't really feel the need to play to pay another monthly fee for something that unless I don't unless I feel like I'm going to use it. So will I ever get there? Who knows, right? But the idea for next generation that all the games you saw today will be available on Game Pass, I think is a great value. So, you know, I think that value proposition is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And we're going to have to take them up, especially since they announced that Game Pass and Game Cloud or, or X Cloud are going to be uh, synchronous with each other. So anything on Game Pass will be playable on the X Cloud and that those services are going to bundle together. You know, you're going to have one, you're going to have the other. Um, you could probably get them separately, but it's smarter just to bundle them both for that. I think it's like the $15.99 per month price point, which is a smart move for Xbox and Microsoft. But we have to see it in practice. We have to try it. I don't think they're going to sell anybody on xCloud, per se, until it launches, until people are really trying out on their real phones and on the newest games and stuff like that. Uh, this Android beta has been out for at least a year, and there's nobody's really talking about it, I guess you would say, because it's not really out there. And probably a lot of people have iPhones, and like me, you know, and they're waiting for the real thing to come to iPhone before it really gets launched. Uh, you know, and Stadia is still kind of flailing out there. So 
I don't know. We won't, we launched the show with Halo Infinite, the successor to Halo 5, and what are you going to really launch an Xbox show with? You know, Halo, obviously. You know, I, I think it looked pretty good. I'm still kind of out there. I saw a screenshot that made it look a little... I don't know, below, but the cut scenes with the sidekick, the um, Latinx guy that's talking to Chief and telling him you're not going to go out there, we already lost, all that stuff. The detail on him looked really good, but I saw some screenshot from one of the enemies when he was fighting, and I don't know if it was really that good. So, could be a little iffy for me right now. You know, open world Halo sounds cool, grappling hook sounds cool. I only watched the trailer once because I was watching it on the live stream. And uh, I didn't go back and rewatch it or anything, but the live stream was definitely like hitching and stuff. I was watching the Game Awards live stream, right? This is supposed to be the official pre-show to this thing. And the entire time, this live stream was like hitching and buffering and the audio was going. It was terrible viewing experience. I've, you know, they say we don't need an E3 anymore because, you know, reasons. We, we have all these different press conferences, but I've never been to an E3 but I've watched plenty of them here at home on my uh, same YouTube app on my Samsung TV or my X YouTube app on my Xbox, and I've never had more problems watching these live streams than I did until this year. I don't know what that reason is, but I don't know. So there's a dip in quality here from you know the big stage presentations, whatever they're pushing that stream out of versus whatever they're doing now, I think there's a difference. So I think that's kind of a, a, a downside here. So speaking to that, that all that hitching and stuff takes you out of the experience of watching the games. And then you have that coupled with Xbox, you know, pushing this diverse range of games, which is a good little thing for your merit badge. But if you look at um, PlayStation's, you know, top selling games, it's Horizon, it's Last of Us Part Two, it's Spider-Man, it's going to be Ghost of uh, Tsushima probably. These third-person action games sell a lot of copies. Whether you've got a female protagonist, a male protagonist, two female protagonists, um, you know, a reformed life beater, killer, whatever, you know, he's not a nice guy, Kratos. Um, Tomb Raider, you know, those games sell. Whether or not they're franchises or got a number on it, I mean, Uncharted probably sold because it's tied into Uncharted 4. Um, it's a franchise, you know, but but this game sold. This game sold. It's got a female protagonist. It's a little dig at Ubisoft there, but, you know, whatever. So what does Xbox have? What have they put out in the last eight years to really build off of? Well, you had the Master Chief Collection, which failed, right? It failed. The only thing that worked was the campaigns, the promise of playing, you know, over a hundred maps from all these different games at launch failed. Is it working now? Yeah. But did it take them like six years to do it? To fix all the problems? Sure. Should they have fixed all the problems? That's a better question. Should they have just abandoned it altogether and just say, well, the multiplayer didn't work out, but at least you can play the campaigns on here. I think they should have. Because what did we get out of Halo this generation? New Halo product. We got Halo 5. Halo Wars 2. That's it. We've had this console for eight years, guys. Eight years. Since 2013. Two Halo games. Two. How many did we get with the 360? Three? Four? We got uh, Halo 3. We got Halo 4. So that's two over here. We got Halo Wars, right? We got Halo ODST. So that's four. We got Halo Reach. That's five. Five different Halo titles on the 360 generation, which was what? Six or seven years, something like that. A little bit shorter than this one. Um, look at Gears of War. How many Gears of War games did we get on Xbox One right now? Uh, let's look. We got Gears of War 4 and Gears of War 5. That's two games. Well, how many did we get on 360, Brent? Well, we got Gears of War 1 two, three, and Judgment, whether you think that was crap or not, that's still four games, right? Versus two, that's like double. So I don't know what's going on with these studios. Why? Now, I've seen the things that, yes, it's harder to develop for, blah, blah, blah. But if you've got a studio and a publisher like Ubisoft that's pushing out Assassin's Creed games on a yearly basis or biannually, 
plus Madden, plus FIFA, all these guys are just recycling engine after engine, system after system, iterating upon iterating on, you know, basically the same thing. And they're doing the, Microsoft's doing the same thing with these racing franchises. You really think something changes year to year? No, it's the same recycled tracks over and over again with probably the exception of Horizon because it's a new environment uh, each game that time comes out. But you're telling me that you can't take the engine that you built on Halo 5 and push out another single player story to redeem the abortion that was um, Locke here and make more Master Chief and actually wrap this story up instead of altogether abandoning it with Halo Infinite? Looks like, I don't know what the hell happens to Cortana. Did you see Locke anywhere? No, the entire marketing around Halo Infinite is be the chief, be this guy, right? Well, that's a Spartan, he's blue, but whatever. Be the chief, right? None of this hunt the truth stuff or hunt Master Chief that this marketing was built around, which didn't even happen in this game, much less what the fuck is a guardian, I don't remember. The multiplayer is great. Multiplayer is great in this game. But, you know, why can't you do a single player ODST type thing for that and wrap that up? You could have. You certainly could have. But instead, you chose to focus your time on Master Chief Collection. And what does that get you? Oh, okay, you know, good good idea from the fans. But I think we would have been happier with two more new Halo games in this time period of eight years, you know, than, uh, you know, fixing one that was broken that no one, you know, really seemed to play once Halo 5 came out, right? We're all playing this the entire time. Um, so, and... Why, why did we buy Psychonauts, the studio, just so we could put out Psychonauts 2? Really? That's why we bought Double Fine? Well, so they could push another game, a sequel to a game from 15 years ago that nobody still, nobody talks about other than, than Tim Schafer? Uh, I don't care about Psychonauts. I don't care about Psychonauts 2. You show me that game and you tell me that it is for uh, Xbox Series X, next gen. That game still looks like it's from PS2 with that character model. It looks terrible, guys. I love Jack Black, but I'm not interested in that game. So, and I know that not every game's made for everybody, but if you're trying to be on top, be number one dog again, sell the most systems, have most people spending the most money in your ecosystem, and that's really what it's about, folks. It's not about selling hardware. It's about sending money through your ecosystem day after day after day after day. And that's what the Game Pass push is. Oh, well, we can guarantee that people are going to spend at least $15.99 on the Xbox sales and keep our revenue streams up, as opposed to Sony who puts out great games that people buy and buy and buy and buy and buy. So if you're not putting out great games, I guess you have to have some sort of service to get that revenue to kick in. Or you could just make more games on top of that service and then wouldn't that push you up here? Just an idea. I'm really disappointed. I, you know, I guess I was hyped a little bit, but and, I, and I've talked with Jim year after year about the Xbox conferences saying I thought they were good. They showed a lot of games, but they also had a lot of third-party support. And this time, maybe that's what I really saw, was like you strip away all the niceties of the third party. You take Assassin's Creed Valhalla reveal outside of this conference, uh, and you, you put in the atro atrocity that was in, uh, what was that, June, May? Um with the terrible green screen effects and blurry camera videos and stuff. The presentation this time was a lot better, but damn. But so you take all these third party video games away and you just have whatever Xbox is doing themselves. And you take all the nice stuff away that, you know, the Keanu Reeves of it all, all that stuff. You take all that away and what is left? Halo, that's all you have to show? You know, we've seen Everwild before. You didn't tell us what it is yet. Uh, you have a tease for Fable, which is a CG trailer. So that's not coming for another two years. This thing did not give anybody a reason to buy an Xbox Series X. And that's what the mission was, right? Wasn't that the mission? Buy Xbox Series X. It's coming out. We have new hardware. Isn't that the, the whole reason why you launch new hardware anyway? Because you have developers asking you for new technologies and new capabilities. So, you know, and also... That maybe they're pushing the limits on the old stuff. You sold everybody an X because it kind of redeemed whatever the, you know, Xbox One was supposed to be and added 4K. So that's great. Runs great. But are any of these games, if they're playable on the One X, are any of them really necessary to buy a Series X for? 
Not this year. Not this year. And I think I just convinced myself that I will wait to buy the next gen system past Christmas time. And I know everybody's hurting for money. And uh, these companies are probably hoping for big sales around Christmas. But with the coronavirus and stuff going on, you know, you really got to give people a good reason to buy something, you know. And I, I don't have any reason to buy either of these consoles, you know. Miles Morales notwithstanding for Sony. Because everything's still going to be playable in my One X. They said it. Cool. I'll play Assassin's Creed Valhalla on my on my uh, Xbox One X. So, Microsoft. What the hell, man? What the hell? Are they going to be the next Sega? And they're going to publish their games on Sony's platform? Sony will be the last console standing? Or are they going to team up with Nintendo and try and do their stupid team-up stuff over there because no way they would ever push their stuff on Sony? Is Xbox Game Pass going to come to Sony when Microsoft finally scuttles this gaming division? It's not good to be second two generations in a row, guys. It's not good. I don't know what's going on. I thought Phil was our savior. You know, they certainly sold him as the savior. <laughs> he said all the right things, but, you know, and he's done some great things. Can't. I mean, you can complain about xCloud still. You can't complain about xCloud. It's not really out, so you can say whatever you want. Game Pass, it's great, great service, great value. But is it going to sell consoles? Is it going to sell hardware? going to put Xbox on the top of the map in terms of gamers' faces and mouths? No. And you didn't do it today with whatever you have. And I know there's still half of the stuff out there that you haven't shown, but maybe you should have prepared something. Maybe you should have prepared better. This is a common case of like, the student who felt confident going in and just blows it either because they're nervous or maybe they're the student that didn't prepare it's kind of what this felt like it's like man you knew better you knew this depended on you and uh you dropped the ball big time and we gave you every opportunity to pick it up beforehand and prepare and practice this is like michael jordan when the chicago bulls in the 90s go into the nba finals and lose in six games straight they won every game up until this point you know in terms of hype, in terms of excitement, in terms of right decisions, in terms of moves being made. When they finally got here, they failed. Now, people being down in the comments saying, hey, Brent, you know, the E3 thing, whatever happened this year, isn't the championship of uh, video games. You're right. It's not. But it is the most visible event in video games year after year after year. And in a year where we don't have one of those events, there is no E3 either because of coronavirus or it's truly died. Uh, this is the visible event, this conference. And they shit the bed. So, that's my word on the Xbox conference this year for 2020. Let me know what you guys thought down below. Give Jim a shout out if you want him back in his commentary. And we will see you guys next time on the other side.